Casita Bakery is one of Deltona's newest restaurants, with its grand opening in October of 2015. It is a bakery with a great assortment of fresh baked pastries, both sweet and savory. But don't think the menu is limited to light fare. There is a good selection of soups and sandwiches, a few that are unique to Mi Casita. And the name Mi Casita, which translates to My Cozy Home, really says it all in describing the hunger-satisfying recipes. A true down-home style of Caribbean cooking with many of the recipes being handed down from generation to generation. And the person calling the shots in the kitchen is Gamalier Santiago, or Gama for short. In this episode, he will prepare his grandmother's chicken soup, a traditional Puerto Rican pastry, and a micasita sandwich creation that is a favorite with its customers, a platanwich. It's pretty cool because instead of bread, it's a plantain. Okay, that's interesting. Now, where did you come up with this idea for a, you know, a sandwich without bread? Well, it's, uh, it's typical in the, in the island, Puerto Rico. Yeah. That instead of using the bread, we use a plantain. Mm -hmm. and you know, instead of small tostone, we give you big tostone, we put meat inside, some, mm -hmm. some salad or something, and you're back in heaven. Okay, so what goes in the platanwich? Because you have, what are the ingredients over here? All right, so for the platanwich, after we peel it and we fry it, we have lettuce, tomato, saute onions, roasted pork, pastrami, American cheese, and Swiss cheese. Okay, so let's do it to it. All right, let's, so we cut the ends. This is how my grandma taught me, so. Okay, I was going to ask you. Uh, I hope I don't disappoint her. Now, it, this recipe or the, this, this type of sandwich, you said this is, is this something your grandmother used to make, or is it oh, kind of a family recipe? Uh, well, not this one. It mostly is a typical, mm -hmm. you know, using the, 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 the planting. Yeah. But um, we just got creative. Uh, okay. We want to use, you know, the pork from the house, good pastrami, some nice saute onions little bold cheese okay and then you know we came up with it people liked it and it's really popular it's been really really popular now you're telling me the name of the sandwich also came from all from the yeah we did like uh we asked uh, all the clients all the yeah. guests who came up with a name okay and then whoever won uh, whoever was the best we're gonna put the name on you know on whoever won okay so the winner was platanwich Okay. What we figure is that plantain and witch, you mix it, plantain witch. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you get a better, easier way to pronounce it. Okay. So you peel the, the platano or the plantain. Yeah. And now you're slicing it lengthwise. Lengthwise. Now with a plantain, when somebody goes to a store to find, you know, plantain, what should they look for as far as like the quality? Does it have to be like really hard? Does it have to be kind of... Yeah. If you're looking for like tostones, it should be like fresh green. Okay. Nice green, and the longer the better, you know. That way you get more meat, you know. Okay. More of the plant say. But fresh green, that's okay. what you're looking for. And about that size? About this size, yeah. yeah. So it's about like a tw 12 inches or something like that? Because well, I guess it has to fit, it has, everything has to fit on it. Exactly, yeah, it has to fit on it. And we're looking, this is a good size for the, you know, for the client. Okay. It's a good size of a sandwich and it's going to be cut in half. It's going to be really nice and, and yummy. Okay, so now what's the next step? Next step, we fry the plantain. So you deep fry it? Deep okay. fry it, yeah. So now that it's in the deep fryer, how long does it cook? It'll take about two minutes, two and a half minutes or so. Okay. We fry it twice. We fry it the first time. Yeah. Then we make the tostones. Okay. And then we do so finalizing it's, them. Like it's like you said, it's like a big tostone. It fries once, you smash it out, you flatten it, and then it fries again. Yeah, yeah, practically. You got it. You can do it now. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I try making a tostone, I wind up making a mess. Right. <laughs> okay, Gama, so now you have your bread or the uh, plantain. Okay, so now what? Now we do, we're going to saute a little bit of the onion. Wait. Let it caramelize. Okay, so that cooks for about how long? It should be less than a minute. Okay. You want to cook with the meat too. Okay. So you put the pastrami and the roasted pork. Okay. Go nice in there. 
Just a little bit of salt to re-enhance all the flavor. Okay. Okay, and those will those they'll, they'll saute on the griddle for about how long? This will take me like a minute and a half or two minutes or so. Okay. Just to get it nice warm. Okay. Nice and hot. And Gallo, who taught you how to cook? Or is this something you taught yourself? Did you well, see other people? Did you, you know, where'd you learn? When I was very, very little, yeah. eight years old, I would say, I started working at a bakery for free. Okay. Just, you know, and then just doing like breads, I was doing like sandwiches, I was whipping, I was mopping. Yeah. And then uh, I liked it so much, I went back in the summer and worked again, so I decided to go to culinary school. I went in Orlando, and after that, I went to West Palm. Uh -huh. In West Palm, I went back to Puerto Rico, worked at an Italian restaurant. I did uh, pastry school. Okay. So I had a little bit of bread, you know, pastry background too. And then I went back to Orlando. In Orlando, I started working in uh, hotels, Starwood, um, Hilton, Windham. Mm -hmm. Our last, our last restaurant, we won the uh, best restaurant in Orlando. Really? Yeah. So I was part of that team. It was, uh, it was an awesome experience. I even learned sushi. Yeah. I learned. It was pretty good. It was really, really awesome. So you've had your hand in a lot of different types of cooking. Exactly. Yeah. Now, is there a, a favorite that you might have as far as like types of cuisine or types of you know like? I really like Asian. Um, Mostly Thai, yeah. because they're really tropical. They're similar yeah. to us. Mm -hmm. They got like coconuts, they got plantain, they got sweet plantain, yeah. they got good seafood. Um, besides that, I like to get really creative. Like, okay. you give me something, I want to make something different. You're going to make your own? Make your own, you know, something different. Something like, oh, what's that? i never seen it. Mm -hmm. Kind of like this, you know? Okay. Get creative, so that's pretty cool. Now, with, all, with everything that uh, Mi Casita, that you guys prepare, is there a favorite that you have? I would say our favorite is this sandwich and uh, the Cuban sandwich, mm -hmm. because just because you know we make the pickles, mm -hmm. we make the mustard, we roast our own pork. You make your a lot of the ingredients you fix up here. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. So now, that's how about Gama? What is Gama's favorite? If, or does he have a favorite off of this menu? I would say, I would say the platanwich. The platanwich. Because I love tostone. I just okay. I, I'm addicted to plantains, sweet mm -hmm. plantains, tostone, mash. Yeah. Hola. Yeah, really nice. So now you put the cheese on there and you let it melt? Yeah, for a little bit, that way when you buy it, you, you get all messy with okay. the cheese. It has some okay, I, I, like, I like that. I like yeah. the way you said that. Yeah. You, you get into your food, get your food on you. Exactly, exactly. So we, we lay the first one, mm -hmm. and then we put the meat on top. Really, really nice and hot. There we go. Okay. So make sure to assemble it everywhere. So and this is our mayonnaise and ketchup. Okay. So it's, we call it mayo ketchup. Okay, that's easy. It's, yeah, it's easy. We put a little bit of garlic, a little bit of mojito. Okay, so it. that it's more than just mayonnaise and ketchup, it's spiced up. Exactly. Okay. That's, yeah. So we just put a layer of it. Pretty nice. Sometimes we try to write our name, but it doesn't work. <laughs> so That would be interesting. I'm, next time I get one of these, I'm going to have to look and see if it says gamma. Right? <laughs> And put tomatoes, put the lettuce, tomato, and then we put the other layer on top. The bread. The bread, yeah. Tied it. That's a good size. Mm -hmm. Just cut it in half. I can't see the presentation. And boom. Oh wow, man, that looks good. <laughs> That's the That sandwich. looks excellent. Wanna have a bite? You don't have to ask me twice. <laughs> I love tostones. Mmm. Mmm. That is good. That is very good. Very good, right? <laughs> Want me to get a napkin? <laughs> oh, well, um, that, is, that is excellent. Right? It's, it's not too too crunchy. It's not really it's heavy. Just, it's, it's just right there, you know. The the toast on it has just the right amount of I uh, did you know. Just, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The meat is cooked really good. The mayo ketchup. And I take a I can take a bath in that. Right, it's pretty good. 
<laughs> that is really good. You combine all the flavors and that's mm. what you get. Okay, Gama, so homemade soups, that's also on the menu. Yeah. Homemade okay, soup. what kind do you have here? So for today we do um, chicken soup. Okay. So practically the, I use the thighs, has bone, has fat, so it's a nice flavor. Yep. So we have garlic, carrots, onions, plantain. Okay. Potato. Okay. Sofrito. Mm -hmm. Recao. And a little bit of sazon. sazon. Okay. And then some broth or water is, is fine. Uh-huh. So uh, about how much water is that? What would you say? A couple of quarts? Or? I would say like four quarts or so. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Around there. So to start, you just put a little bit of oil, not much. Okay. You, you want the garlic. I throw the garlic first. I learned that from grandma. Okay. You get all the flavor first yeah. from the garlic, so. Okay, now this type of, this chicken soup, is this family recipe? Is this like grandma's recipe? This is a family recipe. This okay. is a grandma recipe. This, this is the way she does it. And then I learned from mom. Yeah. And then, I, you know, mom learned from her and then I learned from mm -hmm. mom and then that's I guess my I hope my sons and my kids yeah. learn one day. So this is like a <laughs> this is like a legacy recipe. It's a legacy recipe, and you can do the same with chicken, mm -hmm. meat, pork, etc. Okay, now uh, how much garlic do you have? Because it looks like it's all diced. It's minced up. Yeah, I minced it up in the pilon, the famous pilon. Yeah. <laughs> so I would say like three garlic. Like okay. Three teeth. Mash it up really good. Yeah, you mash it real good. So you get. Smell the garlic really nice. Mm -hmm. And that'll brown for... Brown a little bit. Okay. For like a couple seconds. Then you throw okay. the vegetables. Okay. Now with the plantain, that's it. That's different. Yeah, exactly. We use plantains because back in the island, you have it in your backyard. Yeah. So you just, hey, give me the plantains. Mm -hmm. Or give me the recao and then pop, 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 and you make the soup. Okay. It's cheaper. Yeah. It's fresher. Because yeah, you have it in your backyard. Right there. Yeah. Now, did you bring up a, uh, a point? With a lot of the uh, ingredients that you have, these are ingredients you get here in in, in Volusia and, County in Deltona? Yeah, you get them in Deltona. So you source locally? Yeah, exactly. You get local markets, you know, the herbs local, the chicken, the plantain, so that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have all the uh, all the vegetables in there, and that's sofrito. And this is the sofrito, yeah. Okay, now, for people who aren't familiar with sofrito, what, what is, what, what's in sofrito? Sofrito is uh, it's practically uh, a puree of like sweet peppers. It's yeah. like habanero, but it's, it's not spicy. Mm -hmm. So sweet peppers, recao, garlic, onion, peppers, and a little bit of oil or okay. water, you know, just to get it mm -hmm. all blended in really nice. So you get all those flavors mixed into the, whatever you're doing, arroz con pollo, mm -hmm. or soup, etc. And it goes well with almost everything. Okay, it's so. like a seasonal, you know, but it's fresh. It's fresh, yeah. So you have all the vegetables in there and the, you're gonna let them, do they sweat? Do you wait for them to caramelize? Or? Yeah, you let it sweat a little bit, so all the flavors, you know, get out, you get the garlic, you get the sofrito in there. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you put the chicken. Okay. Put all that chicken in there. Now with the chicken, do you season it ahead of time or you just put it in like that and you then you season it, it later? Yeah, I put it in there because it's gonna get seasoned with the sofrito, the garlic. Okay. And then, I put a bit, a little bit of sazon and coloring. Okay. So it's like dry um, paprika, dry onions. Okay. And then after the coloring. Okay, so just like a real quick recap. So you start off with a little bit of oil and you put in about three cloves of crushed up garlic and mm -hmm. you let that cook for about a couple of seconds, you said yeah. really quick. And then you put in the carrots, uh, the onion, the plantain, and then you put in the potatoes and you let all those sweat for sweat, right. like what, a couple of minutes? Yeah, something? for like five or six minutes. You want okay. to let it sweat nice and cook. And then you put in the chicken. And then you put the chicken. Okay. And put. you also put in the sofrito and you, like you said, you put in the sazon. And the sofrito, sazon, and mm -hmm. then a little bit of salt. Okay. Just like that. And that'll sit like that for, for about how long? That will cook without the water for like seven minutes. Okay. And then when I add the water, the broth, it'll take me like another 15 minutes. Okay. And then at the end, a little bit of noodles. And now you had mentioned... Recao. Okay, now tell me something about that, because you said this is pretty unique to 
this flavor of soup. Yeah, yeah this is like the secret rest, uh, ingredient, pretty much. Okay, okay. It's what you, it's, cacao is very popular in the island. Mm -hmm. You can get it anywhere in the island. Uh -huh. And then it's like very similar to cilantro, yeah. but not as strong as cilantro. And it's like nice, long, okay. really now with yummy. That, and with that, you just like tear it and yeah. put it in? Practically, you tear it apart, tear it apart, and you put it in. Okay. And then that just give a nice, nice flavor to it. So like this. About how many leaves did you put in? It looks like about six or so? Six or two, okay. eight, yeah. Okay. That, grandma says six to eight. Uh, I don't know. I just listen to her. Grandma knows. Exactly, grandma knows. So it looks like it has a pretty good color to it, grandma. Yeah. That's what you're looking for. Nice color. Nice and, and alive, you know? Yeah. Okay, uh, grandma, so everything's been in the pot. It's been simmering for about how long? Well, now it's gonna simmer. It's been cooking for seven minutes. Okay. Now and it's gonna boil, simmer for another mm -hmm. 15, 20 minutes. Okay, so, so now you're gonna add, and nice. you said like about four quarts of water, right? Four quarts of water, you okay. said, yeah. So now you go ahead, add it. Perfect. Now you just go like this. And like you said, with this, now that everything's in there, you have the water in there, it yeah. will simmer for about how long? 15 or 20 minutes or so. Okay. Oh, there, yeah. See, nice. And you simmer it, is it a, like a medium boil? Is it a low or is it high? It's a medium, medium high. Okay, Gama, so the soup has been simmering for about 20 minutes or so? Yeah, 15, 20 minutes or so. Okay. So we added the noodles. Mm -hmm. So all the flavors are good. We taste it already. Mm -hmm. It's ready to go. Okay, so how do you serve this guy up? So, pretty easy. Shake it. Four pieces of chicken. Yep. Plantain, carrots, potato. So we serve it with two um, two toasts. Okay. Two pieces of toast with butter. So that's ready. Then we go over here. And then it's ready to serve. And you just better you try it, it. Give this guy a try. It's nice and hot. Oh, wow. Really good. That's really good. You get some of this chicken. Yeah. Come here, chick. There we go. I mean, really good. You try some bread with it? Yeah, just deep it in there like, like you're really in your house. There we go. Even the bread's nice and hot. Oh, wow. Mm. For a rainy day, that's awesome. Oh, that's excellent. Oh, man, your grandmother, your, your grandmother's great. Right? <laughs> your grandmother came thing. up with a real good recipe. Yeah. If you realize that you actually need that second waste bin, you can order one from WastePro or you can buy your own. If you provide your own bin, there are a couple of specifics the bin needs to meet. The bin has to be the same size dimensions as the WastePro bin. And just as important, the lid on the bin has to be hinged, like the WastePro bin. The hinged lid allows the bin to open when the automatic arm of the truck picks up and empties the bin. Many of our neighbors are doing their part, making sure they're keeping their homes and yards neat and clean by following the city's trash guidelines. It's something simple we can all do, and keeping trash in its place will keep the cost of trash removal down. Reducing how much it costs to collect trash can mean savings in the long run. Together we can do this, Deltona. Trash, it goes in the bin. Start is put a little bit of sugar. Okay. 
on the on the table, and then we put our puff pastry on top. Okay, now puff pastry. Explain what that is, because some people may not know what puff pastry. It's something simple, simple and difficult at the same time. It's okay. just a mix of flour, egg, and lots and lots of butter. Okay. So you make a dough, and then when you have the dough, you put butter, you fold it. Okay. And you roll it out. Roll it mm -hmm. out. You put more butter. Fold it, okay, and then you start making layers and layers and layers of okay. flour, of, of butter and dough, and that's how you get the puff pastry. Okay, so the when it's, that's it's puff. Yeah, so yeah. when it when it cooks, I guess the butter it kind of like helps it rise. Exactly. Oh, okay. Exactly. Okay, so that's puff pastry. So and that, you have sugar on the on one side. So sugar on one side, sugar on the other. Okay. And this is just regular granulated sugar. Re regular granulated sugar. Right? Okay. So after you get sugar. Okay. You roll it out a little bit. Okay, and that's it, kind of like it pushes uh, the pushes sugar the into sugar it. Pushes the sugar in there, yeah. Exactly. Okay. Now this quesito is that kind of like a traditional dessert. Yeah, it's a traditional dessert from the Puerto Rico. Okay. And then there's many ways to do it. You can roll it. You can fold it. Okay. But it's just mostly cream cheese, and uh -huh. um, some sometimes they put guava too. Gua so, like a pasta guayaba. Yeah, okay. like pasta okay. guayaba. Okay. So that's really yummy too. But the popular one and the typical one is cream cheese. Okay. We've been and that's what we're doing now. That's exactly. what we're going to make. Okay. So we fold it. So that's about what you're looking for. Okay. After that's done. And now you're going to cut it. Uh, exactly. Okay. You're going to cut it and it's better a pizza cutter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Much easier. So you go half here. Okay, so you well, wind up with six, six pieces. Okay, that one came out a little off, but that's yeah. fine. This this guy has better luck. Okay. <laughs> so now simple, you know. After yeah. you got your squares, mm -hmm. you can fold a little bit more if you want. Okay. Now, when you cook them, uh, how long do they cook, and at what temperature in the oven? Um, you cook them for like uh, 20, 15, 20 minutes uh -huh. at three hundred twenty-five. Okay. Because you want the cheese to be melted, you want the sugar to crystallize, and you want to have nice size. Okay. And puffy and golden brown too. Okay. Now this is cream cheese. Now you're telling me before that it's not just regular cream cheese that you do something special with it. Yeah, with the cream cheese we beat it, we beat it, mm -hmm. and then we add sugar. Okay, so you sweeten it. Okay. Exactly, you sweeten it and it makes it fluffy. Okay. And it's just easier when you make your quesitos. Okay, and you have that in a. Uh, is that a pastry bag or is that just like a baggie? Or? Yeah, it's a pastry bag. Okay. Regular pastry bag, you can find it, you know, in the supermarket. Okay. So I use a little bit of water just okay. to. And that that, like that helps moisten the. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. So you just go one, one fold, one fold, right, and then go like this, and then you go like this. Okay. Just so you pull, you, you pull give it a stretch. And okay. Then you want to have. There you go. And then that's your quesito. Okay. Pull it like that. Okay. So you do the same over here. You can use this one. Okay, the lucky guy? The lucky guy, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the lucky guy. <laughs> that. Okay, now you, I notice the amount of cheese that you're putting there. I guess you, don't, you want to be, be careful of how much yeah. you put because you don't want it to like... Pop out, yeah. Okay. You want to keep it inside the... The quesito, okay. inside the puff pastry, you know. So like that. Fold it, fold it once. Inside. And then you tuck it into the sides like tuck that. Tuck it in, yeah. You roll it, you stretch out that tail. That tail. And you want to go like that. Okay. That's a really nice quesito right there. Okay, and then like you said, they go into the oven for? For 15, 20 minutes or okay. so. Okay, at 325? At 325. Okay. Yeah. So here's the finishing product. Mm -hmm. Our very, very popular quesito. Okay. See, like I said, nice uh, golden brown delicious, yeah. nice and puffy, mm -hmm. the cheese inside. And at the end, we put a glaze of honey. Okay. And that's it. You can cut it. Okay. Eat it the whole thing, it don't, it don't matter. Let's give it a shot. So go for it. Oh yeah, you can see it with all the different layers. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mmm, very good. Oh yeah, it's nice really and good. creamy and sweet. Real sweet. Yeah, pastry is real delicate. Mm-hmm. That honey adds a good touch. Yeah, exactly. 
Mm. So you guys switch them on and let me see. Very good. It's like a cheesecake you hold in your hand. Mm. They're addictive. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to Deltona TV for more great bites.